Hello everybody and welcome back to Let's Play RimWorld. So, our colony needs to do some expanding and needs to do it quick. It looks like this poor muffalo is starving to death or something. He took some damage, I don't know how. Uh, they both are eating from... What are their needs that they're dying? Oh, he's starving because he's like in this like desert area where I guess not very much grass can grow. That's so sad. In all honesty, maybe we should go ahead and hunt them, take them out of their misery. I mean, we haven't done very much hunting at all yet, so we could always go ahead and test that out. Ah, starting right off the bat with, an, with a recruitment failure. That's always a little bit unfortunate, especially seeing as this is the guy who has such a high loyalty threshold. Maybe, like, in all honesty, I kind of feel like that's definitely the highest loyalty threshold I've seen so far. Do we need to build an- we need another grave? Huh. I guess I just missed, uh, setting up another grave for someone because we didn't put an animal in there, right? I mean, I- I don't think we could have. Be- yeah, yeah, we put a human in there. Uh, I- I thought that we- Wait a minute, what? Oh, that must be the grave's health? The 70 out of 100? I don't know, that's kind of confusing me. Maybe, maybe he's turning into a zombie in there, and he's gonna, like, rise from the grave and try to kill us all. That would be pretty damn scary. But, um, knowing RimWorld, I suppose da suppose anything can happen. So let's see. Oh, that's of course, we need more power. That's one main thing that we need, actually. So let's go ahead and start our usual mining process, or, or the mining process that I planned for us before. Uh, we'll mine out that whole area. As I mentioned, we'll probably only be able to put, like, one or two geothermal generators. Depends on how quickly we start entering the actual, like, cave system portion of this thing. But, hey, no, don't put them down there. Someone needs to build that before too long. Let's go ahead and, um, ooh, nice, carpeting finished. That's pretty cool. Uh, we'll go ahead and get stone cutting next because we still don't really have any reason to use spear tech at all. Maybe we'll uh, eventually have to put a giblet cage or however those things are pronounced out there, but I don't see us doing that anytime soon. So so we, don't ha we won't have to worry about that for a long time. There's so... Even if we wanted to get a giblet cage, that is, there's so much more before that, that uh, before doing one of those that we would want. We really need someone to focus a lot on hauling. Um, when was I gonna set that up? This person can't do hauling, so maybe, maybe I should actually just do that now. Um, that's hunting right there, yeah. So we need hauling. Let's go ahead and swap that to one. Uh, make construction work too, and we'll make this dude our main construction worker. He might not be the best uh, squirrel. Let's actually check on squirrel, especially since squirrel is the researcher right now. Probably not best to actually have him do it uh, at a one, but he does have a passion for construction work. So we'll we'll we'll, we'll leave him at we'll leave him at one for now. Ho hopefully he won't get too distracted by that. I just really want all of this rubble to finally get hauled out of here because we've been we've been leaving that there for way way too long, like far far longer than I should have allowed. And let's also just like set all that to haul just because it's there, you know. Makes the most sense I I think at least just to uh get rid of those. Also makes the area look a lot nicer as well and that's always a big old uh a big old bonus for the old egg. <laughs> it, it chills my eggy bones, or, or something like that. And why it would chill them? I don't really know. Is is chilling your bones usually known as a good thing? That's actually usually a bad thing. That means, like, you're terrified or you're scared of something. But I don't know. Um, Let's see what we have right here. Um, Midworld Chief of from Strength's Rock is passing by. Hmm. It's their chief, apparently. That's, that, yeah, yeah, or, uh, chef, I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, apparently I'm an idiot, just forget what I'm saying. Um, but, let me see. So obviously we need to get that solar panel up, and seeing as all of this is practically done with its mining work, uh, the roof is so goddamn close. Okay, we're only gonna fit one solar panel. Might as well plan for this to be an additional set of, uh, different rooms then. So let's go ahead and make that a simple door for now. Means we'll probably sell this bed and I suppose move it into the hydroponics room because we still need a bed. 
uh, just means it'll be a little bit crowded in there. Probably best to actually move it in there instead, so we don't have two people living in the same room. And then we can uh, place down the rest of these metal tiles, along with gain that uh, solar panel built. Because, it, as I have mentioned many a time now, no, not, not a geothermal. Um, the solar panel is actually going to be very, very important to us. And in fact, I think we'll actually put it right there. Because uh, th then it's less far, then it's more far away, there's more distance between it and the geothermal generator. So if there are any fires that get started in this area, there's a, a much smaller chance that we're going to like completely screw ourselves over because of something like that. Once we finally recruit this guy, we'll probably sell that right there so we can make that an additional door just so people can get back and forth through there. Might even do it right there as well, but we'll, we'll figure that out eventually. Um, one thing I should actually concern myself, energy is able to pass through... Okay, I wasn't actually sure if energy is able to pass through simple doors. That would be a really, really big mistake on my part to invest so much in those if, um... If that actually <laughs> turned out not to be the case at all. So luckily we weren't making a really, really stupid mistake for a uh, exceptionally long period of time. How are we doing on food? We've got 115 in the bank, and we got some more growing. Certainly isn't growing as fast as I would like it to, but before too long, we might be able to get a second grower. That's the thing that... Oh, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, how is this all set up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We only have one grower right now, and obviously growing is... Uh, like having at, at like two growers is pretty crucial once you get a lot of people going so uh, maybe even more of course so at, at, at this point I think we're going to be able to sustain ourselves for sure but we're not really going to um flourish in regards to our food supply and we could make someone else a grower as well but I don't think that would be very very smart at this current moment I think there's other things we need to prioritize mainly Speaking of that, though, where do we want to expand? We could either further expand our actual base, which I think would be a good idea, because then eventually we could get uh, everything set up to have our, our turret room going. But I don't think we need to worry about that too much. In fact, uh, Wolf Dark Rose in the comments below was telling me that I should probably keep my turret count low. At least uh, in the early game. Because this is actually something that I thought was a thing in the game, but never 100% sure about. Mainly from a lot of... Uh uh, my my older play in the series I was always unsure as to whether or not the the like raider count does increase depending on how many uh, turrets you have but a uh, wolf dark rose was was confirm uh, confirming my suspicions and telling me that that is indeed the case so we're we're of course um, before too long going to get that corridor built and probably like the, like, three turrets? I think that's how many we had in the last run that we did, um, where we got to building a lot of turrets, at least in the early game. I know we built more later on, but I believe in the early game we did have, like, three of them, or or maybe just two, and, and we used our, our people um, for the rest of the defensive means. So, we're, we're obviously also going to compare everything to the next fight we have the the our, our most recent fight was just two dudes with um both of them with molotov cocktails so i'm pretty sure we could withstand one additional raider attack oh this is new we got uranium drops and there's that pistol why haven't i picked up that pistol yet does anyone need a pistol um Ah, yes, Squirrel needs a pistol i really wish i, I know i complained about this before but i really wish that um, the game would go back to a way so that you could see what they have equipped. I mean, I, I guess technically you can because it says it right there, but it was much more user-friendly when there was uh, initially the photo of what weapon they were wielding um, in the little slot right there as well, so, you know. But I, I need to test out how this orb this new orbital, orbital trade beacon works. So, and I, I think as a part of that, we might actually have to put weapons in here again. So let's actually, for now, start stashing all weapons in here, because unless we have to put a stockpile... Oh, shoot. Actually, I'm going to cancel that. If 
If my suspicions are correct, and I would imagine they would be so, seeing as it would probably be somewhat similar to uh, the launch pad was in the past, I think we might have to... Let let's actually test it out. First, we're going to go ahead and select to have weapons put in here. Um, but, but what I was worrying was that maybe you have to put a stockpile zone in this light, in the radius of this orbital beacon, and then they'll be beamed up from within, like, the orbital beacon's radius. But who knows, maybe, maybe it's gone back to the way of, the ways of the past, where they actually kind of teleport, um, up to the people. Just now the orbital beacon is, um kind of a logical reason for it or maybe the people will have to care whenever you make a trade maybe your people will, ac will actually have to carry the stuff over to the, the orbit orbital beacon for the trade to actually commence i have no clue i'm just uh creating some theories in my mind but we do have a group of raiders from the menifio i can't really tell if that's exactly it since the text is so small uh, sometimes of the tree have arrived nearby they will repair for a while prepare for a while then attack okay okay for a second there i was terrified because there's so freaking many of them um but they are just tribesmen that is still very very scary though because they definitely outnumber us for sure and that kind of makes me want to go ahead and build a turret especially since they are so nearby but I want the turrets built way, way up here, so... I don't know, we'll figure it out. Two of these guys were... W w was hell for us before, so who knows, actually. This might be really, really bad and dangerous for us. We've got one with three shooting, five shooting, uh, three shooting, six shooting, a five shooting, three, and a zero trait. Incapable of it. So that's going... that person's gonna be doing some melee on us for sure. Not the scariest group in regards to their skill, only one of them actually has a bow and arrow, but those rocks can still be pretty hefty as we did indeed see. Um, everyone else has like a pistol, I don't want to disturb her sleep, although she's gotten a lot of rest, so I think that that's fine. Mullins was the Lee Enfield, the Squirrel has a pistol now, and John, what about you, also a pistol, okay. So we're gonna have to be cautious with these guys, especially when our people start going down to, uh, their area, um, prematurely. Especially when two people start going down to their area prematurely. That's a little bit sucky that all that metal is chilling right there with them. L let's see if John and Mullins will actually do something else. Okay, good. They're, they're going to it. Oh, no! But the separate task they're doing is hauling! Okay, one of them has to be a miner, so let's actually go ahead and start working our way towards mining, um out this area right here obviously we could use it to expand and then also it'll allow us to get that uh that metal supply right there and we'll also kind of tell both these dudes and dudettes to stop for the moment thank you john mullins what are you going to do crap uh mullins what is your task what do you care about most in the world well, you're the person who I made hauling number one, so let's actually get rid of that for the time being. That's an easy way to handle things for sure. Is she also the grower? We pro- no, 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 of course she wouldn't be because that would be number one. Okay, Squirrel's just going to research. So let's see, um, after we get all of that metal right there, seeing as we will have a lot of metal chilling in our base, hell, we even have 300 right inside our main stash, and that's a pretty sizable amount. Uh, 300 can disappear like that, but um, but seeing as we have that whole supply out there, and now we're going to start mining uh, more in this cave, and it seems to be quite a uh, quite a large amount in here to be sure. I I think we might be a okay to start putting down some carpetings. Uh, we'll obviously have to consider that, as we will also actually. I think we might want to consider whether or not we. Oh, shoot, no, we can't call for help because we don't have a communications, uh, any way to, uh, communicate with people set up, so... Who knows, it might be smart to go ahead and build one of those really quick, but since I don't have a designated room for it, I honestly kinda don't want to. So maybe it's really stupid of me to think like, hey, we're going to uh, rely on our own efforts for fighting all these guys. Oh, okay, here goes the fight. I don't know. Obviously, we'll have to see whether or not we can handle it right here and right now. So let's uh, go ahead and set everyone up. 
I would say that actually we might want to consider swapping someone over to a Molotov cocktail, but that's not going to be uh, in the cards for us because it is uh, raining right now, of course. Sucks that we're not fighting people who use Molotov cocktails because that would obviously make me uh, much more confident in regards to our success uh, or our chances at success. Nice to see, though, that some of them... Oh, thank God it's raining, because otherwise that fire could cause us some serious problems. But some of them are focusing on other things, so that's pretty damn good for us, I would have to say. Um, and some of them are being kind of stupid on top of that. Yes, 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 kill the first one! Oh my God, he's so close to dead. Um... Squirrel's a little bit wounded, but that's one guy down. Uh, actually, everyone's getting a teeny bit wounded at the moment. I think we should be able to handle this. That's another one of them almost dead. So the oh shoot, no what? Oh no, a, no, a local boom rat has gone mad. Where is he? Okay, he's like uh, not incredibly far from us, but who knows? Maybe we'll be able to use that to our advantage. Like once that boom rat gets nearby, we could probably go ahead and run inside. Uh oh yes. Oh nice, we get to recruit one. That's two tribesmen that we're going to try to recruit. I wonder I wonder if tribes people just have a really high um like a uh, loyalty threshold. That would obviously be really annoying. Okay, John. Let's actually not put him inside but move him back. Probably should have had everyone aim at that archer much earlier because obviously he's going to be the the biggest powerhouse he's the most damaged in fact because of that let's go ahead and try to have john flank that archer that are uh, john albeit he's pretty damn wounded but he is the melee attacker in the group if i remember correctly yeah his melee is 13 so if we're able to flank that guy and punch him like even once i think he should be toast Okay, most of our people are pretty healthy. Mullins is a, in a bit of a scary spot, especially now. Mullins at 40. There's that boom rat. So let's actually let, let's actually go ahead and go with that plan I was having and move everyone indoors. Obviously, that me. Oh, of course he got freaking inside. Oh my god, why did he have to be targeting John? That's really, really bad. Let's move John into... Oh, wait, no, 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 he's not targeting John. I don't know what... Oh. Wait, uh, he's- okay, John, you just fight the boom rat, John. Everyone else will move out a little bit farther and just, like, please take out that guy. Th this- this fight just got really, really awkward and kind of clumsy, but... You know what? We- we've got the cover situation and they don't. They're being flanked right now. And there's only two of them left in that vicinity. Uh, that's a fire inside the house, so John should probably go ahead and deal with that because I don't- that- that fire- well, actually, even if that fire spreads, there isn't really too much that's gonna damage. I don't know, let's 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 move John over here and have him try to do that flanking maneuver that I was planning for him. Who the hell is this? Who the hell is this? I must have missed that. A colonist needs rescue! Aw, oh, crap. Okay, who has the most health? Oh no, shoot, it was Mullins too! Mullins is our best shot! Okay, let's let's rescue Mullins really quick. Nice, that's another one down. Okay, John? T are you kidding me? Oh, oh, sorry, okay. I was- <laughs> I almost panicked for a sec because I thought that that person being injured was actually, uh, Rojas being injured, but that was indeed not the case. Mullins is about to take that dude out. Is that just one of the raiders? Oh yeah, it's a female ro warrior. I guess that is a raider. Okay! Fighters from the Muffalo Tree are fleeing. Maybe Squirrel can take that guy out still, and maybe John can take that dude out. Um, oh yeah, yeah, jo John, you go ahead and melee attack him. He's he should be toast. Oh come on, John! I told you to melee attack him. Why didn't? Why did you disobey me? Foolish fool. Okay, you're gonna fire at him instead. He'll probably get away. Oh shoot! John, I love you. You are a pro, man. Absolute pro. We'll let that one escape. He could go ahead and tell his people of, um, their, their disgraceful efforts in trying to beat me. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe, maybe, maybe this is act, this actually is a thing in the game right now and I'm just not aware of it. Did I really not make any of this a home zone? That was absolutely foolish. Um, but now that fire will be put out momentarily. After we rescue one of the barbarians, I totally messed up and didn't rescue that dude in time. Oh, 
and barely rescued that one in time too, but we're at least gonna get one person to uh, to recruit, so that'll be a good thing for us, of course. Uh, thunder didn't strike near us, of course, gotta undraft my people. Don't wanna make some uh, stupid mistakes because of that. John, my main man, you gotta, like, put out the fire. Looks like Rojas is, is doing it. What was I just saying, though? I was saying something about something. I forget what that something was. So let, let's go ahead and start mar marking the graves. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed that I didn't notice that that person was dying sooner. But honestly, actually, we might not have been able to even, uh... Even if we... Even if I, I did pay more attention to, uh... Prairie, pra prairie? Is that just prairie? I don't know. Even if I did pay more attention to that person's health, I don't think we could have uh, saved him on time uh, without, like, um, at least risking our people taking additional damage because that fight did get a little bit hectic at the end. So I think it probably would actually be a wise thing to go ahead and start working on um, on our defenses for the future. The, the only bad thing about that, I would say, is that these guys did come from the bottom, and that's definitely um, our weak point right now. Our, our weak point is is and has always been the bottom, guys, and honest, honestly, it probably always will be. The bottom is a scary place for us, so... <laughs> oh, God, I would have the maturity level of a two-year-old. So we got one, two, three, four, five bodies. Five bodies to go ahead and toss in them gra- Ah, no! Foolish me. One, two, three, four, five. Someone will move those over once that grave gets made, and we can cancel that. Go ahead and move the grave right there instead. How much power are we gaining now? Um, we are- Oh, we are gaining a lot. Of course that's not as good as we would hope. Uh, not quite as good as it might look, I should say, because we only have one solar panel up, so... Not only will a lot of that power, well, none of it will be drained because our power isn't even at the negatives at night, if I remember correctly. So maybe we could turn on a couple of lights, but I don't think there's any that I would really necessarily want to turn on at the moment. I don't know. We probably won't go ahead and start turning lights back on until we get uh, at least another solar panel built. Who knows, maybe even hopefully before too long we'll get to that second geothermal generator. If we, Since we are deciding to focus more on um, branching out our base, I don't think it should be all that difficult to get out to that additional geothermal generator. So let's start setting up the plans for our actual home base construction. Um, we'll go ahead and set out walls covering all of that as planned we'll leave that open right now St actually there's absolutely no reason to leave that open right now because we've got that door right there um to to get into this back area i suppose we still have all of that metal to mine out in that back area so we'll have to do that before too long and we probably won't mine out all of this rock because there's essentially absolutely no reason to. It would just risk a cave in and we're not going to find anything in there. It's way too small. So no reason to plan uh, for that. Let's put a door right there and a door right there to match the bottom one. We'll probably have a room on this side, so a door right there should suffice rather nicely. And once that's, once that's done, we could go ahead and start planning building the rest of these as well. Hmm, if we're building this wall in the future, that means we're probably also going to want to build the wall that will go along this way. And that's gonna be a big ol' wall. Is there any reason not to do that? I don't- I don't actually think so right now. Except for maybe this metal supply, but... Even then, we're gonna mine out this section anyways, so... So yeah, once we start building that wall... We're gonna build another wall going up along there. The main reason for that is because I'm gonna want to put a door right there. So I want to make sure that raiders will still come in this way while um, there being uh, a way for us to get to these graves and the solar panels that I'm gonna put there rather easily. So, so yeah. Who knows, I gotta say, guys, I, I have complained a lot about how um, there's this new thing where we can't build uh, in the 
like outlining of the map, but uh, it might actually be a good thing for us, all things considered, in regards to our our likelihood of success. Now that enemies always come from the outskirts of the map, because in the long run, that means we're gonna have n absolutely no chance that they're going to like get launched directly into our base. I mean, we have seen that em enemies still get, like, launched in or or rocketed in or whatever you might want to call that, but it's it's certainly a lot less likely. Thank you, Mullins, for grabbing that food, um, especially since we are starting to run a little bit low again. Mullins, are you getting some sleep? What are you doing, Mullins? Oh, Mullins is going to build the grave. Okay, that's pretty good. We seriously need to recruit this person, though. Uh, Kamisa? Or, 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 of course, this, um, Banistra will, will suffice, uh, as well. Just, I would imagine we're probably gonna be more likely to recruit, uh, Kamisa, because we've already worked towards uh, recruiting, uh, her, then we will, oh wait, no. Yes, still her, then we will this other lady. We're getting a lot of naked women in our tribe, which I suppose is a good thing. <laughs> At least for the guys, um, unless the girls are lesbians. Who knows? Maybe everyone feels awkward. Maybe, maybe everyone in our squad is like, uh, can, the, can they put on some clothes? There are prisoners, so unless we want them to be naked, we probably could require them to wear clothes, but I guess they just don't. How is um, the recruitment going along here? Oh my god, such a high loyalty threshold. That has to be a... Uh... That has to be a tribe thing. It actually probably also would make some sense that the tribes people would have a really, really high uh, loyalty threshold count. Kind of sucks, because like I said, we really, really want to recruit those people because that would allow us to get more growing work done. And actually, I think that's the main reason why we want to recruit someone, just to make us feel a little bit more stable in regards to our food. Um, or food consumption and all that jazz. But you know, that time will come. Another way we could do that, of course, or at least just to make us feel more safe, would be to get that communications room set up. So maybe we'll actually put it down here. It might be a somewhat awkward place to put it, but I actually kind of like the idea of placing it down there. So let's let's go ahead and mine out, like, like that much space, that'll be more than enough room to uh, set up that communications room. We s we need to start being a little bit cautious and um, prepare ourselves for how the future of how we mine out this area, or at least before uh, until we start putting more walls in. Because I could see a cave in happening in here before too long if we're not uh, too cautious. So we'll have to be worried about that. Let's be give things to worry about. I will be a little bit worried once we get this thing built until we get a wall right there because obviously that will leave us um a little bit open to an attack if enemies come from down here in that time. But while while raiders raider attacks do happen rather frequently in this game uh, from time to time, I don't think we should be having one uh, quite too soon. Have we mined? Yeah, we still haven't mined out this whole thing of metal, so we've got so much metal coming in! We're gonna be in Metal City. Look at it! It's giving us an Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, Terminator 2 thumbs up right there. With, like, the lava scene. It's like the, uh, the, uh, I know now why you cry, but it is something I could never do. Like, frickin' best movie. I love the Terminator movies, guys. But, uh, unfortunately, I feel... Actually, no, it doesn't follow the flow of most things, where the first one is the best and slowly gets a little bit worse. Kind of like the, the Matrix effect, or the, um, or the, uh, oh, I had another example in my mind. What, what was I gonna say? Um... I completely forgot the other example I was gonna go for. But th there actually are a lot of movies that do the Terminator- Oh, f Fudge! Yes, I am an idiot. An absolute buffoon. How did I not think to put a freaking no roof zone over here? Okay. Well, guess what, guys? This is an individualized room now, and we're probably going to move that, like, here? I don't want to put it there, because that's where that's gonna go on. 
<sighs> we're selling our distress beacon though and removing it. Or, uh, not distress beacon, orbital beacon. Let's go ahead and move it, R plan to put it right there instead. Now I need to know, or remember, no roof zone covering that whole area. In fact, let's go ahead and put that down right now. I think it, no, it covers up a little bit more than that, I think. Like, about, about that much space? Oh, I guess we can't actually see, uh, how much space it covers until it's fully placed. Nice! Fear tech is finished! We do not have to worry about research ever again! I love it whenever that ha I, I- It's a love-hate relationship, actually, whenever that happens in this game, because I love freaking working on the research, you know? The research is a- It's a big, exciting thing in this game, because it's bro both restricting what we're able to do, but also kind of, uh, making that cool and fun in a unique- unique way. Let's actually make this art one level one. Um... And uh, wasn't I going to change something else here based on something like that? This is the person who I was going to make hauling number. Oh, yeah, I definitely need to put them hauling number one again. I, I think that's actually all perfectly well and good. Squirrel was indeed the person who was a, um, or has a small passion for for construction work, correct? Yeah, yeah. So Squirrel will pro before too long will probably become the greatest construction person or per person in the entire world, uh, obviously. So so that'll be pretty well and good for for Mr. Squirrel there. Uh, that's covering all of that area. It's it's one block ahead of the debris or uh, above the debris, I should say. No roof zone is one block above the debris. Awesome. That's all set up exactly the way we want it to be. So what is this room gonna be now? It's gonna be a big room. Which kind of irritates me. I mean, we could, like, break it into two separate rooms, but... And if... I didn't make- now, now we get this weird wall jetting out. You know what? In all honesty, guys, I might actually say sell this. I don't like the way it looks. We're gonna fix it. So we're gonna sell all of this. Uh, that one doesn't need to be sold, so let's go ahead and cancel that one. And we're instead gonna build the wall going up along here. That'll make this room a little bit smaller, which will make me happier. Hopefully that should completely roof it in as well, because now that's an additional problem that we have with that. And then, um... Oh god! We probably got a lot, yeah, a lot of roofs collapsing. Okay, luckily no one was in there to actually get her. <gasps> no! Oh my god, I am such a fool! Our Lee Enfield! Oh my lord, what have I done? It actually, it's okay. <laughs> Which is pretty damn lucky. It doesn't look like it was crushed. Maybe if things are crushed to the... Oh, and we lost some metal, too. That must have been that metal up there. Goddamn buffoon. That's what I am, guys. We we need to... Wh why, why didn't I pick up that Lee Enfield before? Because I had absolutely no reason not to. Mullins is just uh, hauling stuff. So let's pick that up now before we have any more problems with that. I don't think the weapon's... Damage affects its uh, effectiveness, but I may be completely wrong about that. So, the way I feel right now is that that Lee Enfield is actually a-okay. Uh, we put it in a huge risk, almost destroying it, but I think it's going to be perfectly fine. But I may indeed be wrong, and it might, like, be much less effective than it was in the past. Hopefully that's not true, but if any of you guys actually know if the da- Oh shoot, I totally forgot to wall this off. If any of you know uh, whether or not the damage of the weapon actually affects its ability of fire, please, uh, please inform me about that. That would be something that I would indeed find very, very interesting. I think actually before too long we might uh, go ahead and change this too, because this wall looks so ugly. We might actually swap to having a couple horizontal, uh, not horizontal, some, uh, vertical hydroponics tables set up here. Like, maybe sell that one and put two of them that are vertical? I think we could fit two of them vertically there. H how, how do they actually fit in according to m matching the top one? Eh, it'd be a weird pattern, but I think we might do, like, or we, hmm, 
Or we could just do two of them against the back wall. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure this out. We'll, we'll figure it out eventually. But I think we're going to eventually sell that hydroponics table so we can actually get rid of that wall and build a real wall right there. That'll look much, much nicer in our future and all that jazz. So let's see. We have made a ton, or I, I have. Of course, it's one of those things, when, whenever I do well, I say me. Whenever <laughs> I do bad, I say we. I don't know if that's a thing that I really do have done, but um, I don't want to... I don't want to do that. I, I'll take the blame for my my misactions and stuff like that. But I've made a lot of mistakes in this run. Hopefully, we'll be able to uh, fix that and stop doing that in the uh, near future before too long. Once this gets set up, we'll probably start working on the outside. Like I said, we need to set up... Um, I think this would be a really good room for the uh, comms unit, as I mentioned before. Uh, then we have, like, all of this to expand as well. I don't really know what we'll put in there. We'll, we're definitely going to make this either the butcher's room. Ooh, but it's so freaking far away. You know what? This is our new storage room. We're gonna make this the butcher's room, because it's right next door to the nutrient paste dispenser, and where people are going to be eating. So it makes a ton more sense to actually make this, like, the cooking room. And it's sizable enough to fit, like, the both the butcher's table and the cooking stove in here. So I think that'll work much better. This will give us much room, more room for storage. I think that'll work well, all in all. So, um, that'll be the plans for next episode and all that jazz. So anyways, thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like, comment, and or subs subscribing if you have not. Tripping over my words. I am the Egg Scrambled Gamer. And I will see you all next time.